Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is Thursday. We're still in Lamentations chapter three. I'm with Chris Rexrode and Alyssa Bream, and I want to focus really on the last um, three verses of that chapter. It says, Pay them back, Lord, for all the evil they have done. Give them hard and stubborn hearts. Then let your curse fall on them. Chase them down in your anger, destroying them beneath the Lord's heavens. So he prays, God, judge them, like crush them, make them pay. That seems so unchristlike. Kind of sounds like Jonah up on the hill when he was forced. Yeah. <laughs> And so the question I want to ask today is, are there situations or in what situations is it okay to pray for God to judge people harshly? I think when you, when it's very obvious that there is a pure evil or something that's going on that's incredibly unjust, it's just blatantly obvious. Like? Um, Adolf Hitler. You know, if you were in that situation, you know, wherever you were in the world, I wouldn't blame anybody for praying something like that, you know, that, that God takes action on him and, and the people that are in charge of what's going on. When you're in the midst of a trial, <laughs> where, wherever it comes from, which we've discussed so many times this, this week, um, do you think it's wrong? I mean, do you think it'd be wrong to pray for a judgment on people that are doing things that are bad and that are affecting you in your life? I don't know if I would be able to, and and I could be totally off on this, but I don't think it's wrong to pray those things. Now, if you go and act out on those things or if, if you take that in other ways, it, prayer is meant to be an outlet and to talk to God about it I, I don't think that that's wrong and to um, express that and then to maybe also pause and listen to see what God is trying to teach you in that situation or what you need to do in that situation um, to bring peace. I, I, I don't know if I could say that it would be wrong to pray something. And I'm willing to be corrected on this. No, no, no. I, so I don't I, know that I have. So I genuinely believe that there are limited things that are off limits in prayer like if it is genuinely a, a god man relationship i th i think god would rather you say whatever to him than to someone else no matter what it is how judgmental hateful whatever you know i, I think he has the ability to decipher almost like a abraham lincoln's hot letters you know you, you say it you just don't the per person you're saying it about doesn't ever get it I can't think of a time, I, I don't want to say I've never done it, I just can't think of one right now, where I prayed God's judgment on somebody, like God just, and you know, he gets specific, you know, about what how he wants it carried out, you know, <laughs> um, because most of the time, most of the time, there are, there, there are a few people in this world, I don't care to ever see again. But there's a very, very limited number of people. But if I did, I would be fine. I just, you know, I wouldn't lose my mind. It's just, I would just prefer not to see them again. Most of the time, for me, it's easy to disconnect and just move on and and be done. But my fear would be if it happened. You know, like I can't think of a specific example. Like if you pray. Yeah. God, take them out of this world. And that next day they died, mm -hmm. you know, or they got in a car accident or something. Somebody murdered them. Like, I don't know how I would feel if that, if that happened. Um, it would be almost eerie, somewhat scary. I'm sure I would have some guilt. But if if these were people, and I think in we have to remember that this was in the midst of great warfare and destruction, and like it wasn't like oh this person treated me wrong right. and like like they cut in line or like whatever it was it was a destruction 
<laughs> so if their enemies were to die, it would mean that people were saved. So if it was a situation where this person was causing physical harm to people and then they got in a car wreck and died and you prayed for protection for, you know, that group of people, would that, would that be the worst thing? Maybe not, you know, maybe not. But, and that's why I ask him, you know, so what are some examples of evil? Because I think we pray, I, I know some people who pray God's judgment every time they're crossed, like, you know, somebody does you wrong. Evil is a, depending on how you view it, either a very high bar or a very low bar, you know, depending on which right. direction you want. But it, for me, it's like a very high bar for me to call something evil or someone evil, like in modern days. I So I, I would agree about Hitler, what I've known about Hitler, but I didn't live in that time. So I'm not giving anybody a pass, but... I've I've read lots of books about it, and there were a lot of people who were tormented about being involved, taking a stand, doing something about it. That I might would have had some of the same apprehensions today. I'm you know I'm what 70, 80 years removed. I can look back. And say, <laughs> you're going to say you're seventy years. Old. No, I'm seventy or eighty <laughs> years removed. It's a, it, it happened before I was born, yeah. so I can look back with clarity now and say, gosh, he was an evil person. Mm -hmm. But had I been living in that moment, I may not have been able to see it as clearly. You know, at least until the end. You know, by the time you get to the end and it becomes obvious what he's doing. You know. Um, but even in America, in that situation, America turned away refugee ships of Jewish people um, for what they believed to be justified reasons. You know, they were they were doing the right thing for for the nation. In modern times, you know, so it, I think it's easier for me to evaluate evil in hindsight. In modern times, what rises to the level of evil? Um, one would be trafficking of children for me. Mm -hmm. Like, if they all died, like I, I don't think I would have any remorse. Like I would, I would, I would hate they didn't make it. You know, they didn't repent. But the traffickers and the organizations and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and 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 I don't know whether I feel more strongly about the people who are doing the trafficking or the people who are purchasing them. Mm -hmm. it, both are horrible, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm trying to think of some other situations. There are some things that I believe Eighty years removed, we're going to look back and and say, "Man, y'all were you should have taken a bigger stand about some things." Um, social media may be one of those things that eighty years from now we look back and we see the manipulation and control that people were imposing on us and how it was using people, not just, just media in general is what maybe I should say it that way. Um, I think that we already have some of this inkling with opioids, mm -hmm. you know, where we can look back and see that the manufacturers knew ages ago mm -hmm. how addictive and harmful it was, and they pervaded on the people, and then it becomes this epidemic, and now we have this Massive. I, I don't know that I can talk about evil in a very good context there, but I, I believe that we may look back on it and see, man, those people were, they really did our society a an injustice. Um, but do y'all have some examples of like modern day evil that trouble you? I can think of, I, I know that. Saying just saying this word might cause some divisiveness, but like the Me Too movement would be a thing that was hidden for a long time that people were getting assaulted and not reporting it or not getting believed. 
And um, as that came to light, I think people realized just how pervasive that was in certain areas of society and that it needed to be changed. Um, I can see that as something we look back on and man, p- the people who did report things and were ignored or something, we can see how that was evil and just a few changes could have changed a lot of people's lives. I don't think, you know, it's, it's weird. I'm, I'm not trying to bail you out, but I'm, I'm, I want to offer some, a, a little bit of what I would consider to be adjustment. I think sometimes when we say phrases like me too, or black lives matter, it all, those, those are trigger words for some right. people and they automatically go one way or the other. Um, but I don't think any reasonable person who has any amount of self-reflection and observation about the world in general and how things work would not realize that there were, in many places, uh, a different set of rules, you know, and how... Mm -hmm particularly women were treated. I, Barbara and I listen to novels when we ride and we're in the middle of this book right now, of which I won't say the name because I don't want people judging me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the characters over her lifetime has experienced multiple sexual assaults. And one of them, so, you know, lots of writing now we'll you'll have modern day and then this flashback, you know, and we're and so that's the way the book is written. It's this is what's going on right now. And then you get a flashback, how do you lead up to this? And um there is this description of a sexual assault. And like it makes me sick to my stomach when I lit when I'm listening to this graphic depiction of this abuse, and it's hard for me to understand how that could happen. Like, it's hard for me. Now, I understand how some things happen, but it's hard for me to understand how that could happen. And um, I think that in those cases, those people could be considered evil. One of them that I thought about um, kind of hits me a little bit personal because of some friends that are locals and missionaries there. But in Haiti, the uh, the turmoil that they've gone through for decades of corrupt leadership, um, holding back funds that come into the country, typically like 90 percent of them, um, the, the government all the way through the army and a lot of the police are corrupt and stop and do things to people. And it's just that they just need like huge change there. And I guess if I'm, I'm not asking God to destroy the leadership there. I I just would love to see it be replaced in whatever manner he chose. Yeah. So I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but all governments corrupt at some level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just the, that's just the reality of it. But in dictatorships, especially in those third world countries, they are led by people who are extremely nefarious, like Mm -hmm. just bad people. Haiti may be the, it certainly is in our hemisphere, the the prime example, Mm -hmm. you know. But there are other places where that plays out. Africa has suffered through that, you know, the entire continent as a different countries, nations where they've had bad leaders that just oppressed the people, took advantage of the people. And um, it seems like, and this is my experience because I've been to Haiti, some of the most wonderful, loving people. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's only a small piece mm-hmm. that oppresses the rest. And m- maybe that's what I want to say about evil is right now is I think it is a much smaller percentage. I think there are bad people. I think there are misguided people. I think there are ignorant people. But the level of people who are straight evil, I think is a small percentage of people, but they do a massive amount of damage. Yeah, I agree.
Well, thank you for being here today. Hope you'll be back tomorrow as we continue this conversation or finish up our conversation on the Book of Lamentations. 